today I'm going to do something a little different and that's actually build something instead of ripping something apart. Um, I want to replace our PlayStation 3. We have the old fat back or fat PlayStation 3 and it consumes quite a bit of power. Uh, from what I've read it's about 200 watts under load doing a, a PlayStation or um, a Blu-ray video. So and that's pretty much all we use it for. So I'd like to replace that with ideally a relatively low power system, but uh, most importantly one that can do a lot more. For example, the um, Amazon Instant Video through uh, the PlayStation has become really spotty, uh, as is uh, mostly Netflix. So Netflix is like almost useless most of the time. It'll get to 25% of buffering and stop for no reason, yet it works fine on every computer and phone in the apartment. Uh, so what I've done is I've scrounged together bits and pieces to make a relatively small, relatively low power, but somewhat beefy uh, system for playing uh, for a home theater PC basically. Uh, what I've picked up uh, just came in today is a, a LG Blu-ray player. Uh, this is a combo drive so it doesn't burn Blu-rays, it just reads them. Uh, it's the uh, UHL, sorry, UH12NS30. Ugh, LG part numbers, what are you going to do? I do like their drives, though. Uh, a Cooler Master Elite 130, which is a quite compact case that can hold a two-slot video card. That's important. I can get a much smaller uh, case for a Mini ITX motherboard, but what I can't do is put a dual-slot card in it most small cases do not support two slot coolers. So this is the GTX 650 from my Hackintosh. I recently replaced it with a GTX 700 uh, which I picked up on eBay. Uh, this one is a pretty decent card, albeit very cheap. Uh, it's a Gigabyte branded one. I personally like Gigabyte branded stuff mostly because they are kind of a friend to the Hackintosh community without even trying. Most of their motherboards and stuff are completely compatible with uh, Hackintosh uh, Mac OS and right out of the box it's like they almost go out of their way to build systems that will become Macs properly. Aside from their Wi-Fi cards they always use those Arthios, Atheo, whatever the hell the name is with the A. Uh, those Wi-Fi cards that do not work under Mac OS. Uh, another thing I picked up is a IR receiver. I have no idea if this is going to work. Um, I have a motherboard up here which is a Asus um, B75M ITX. It's an ITX uh, form factor motherboard so it's very tiny, 17 by 17 centimeters. Uh, it has a proper 1155 socket on it. I know 1150 is out. I don't care. It's good enough. I bought an Ivy Bridge Celeron processor for it. Uh, very cheap off eBay. Uh, it's the 1610 or 1620? I think it's 2.6 gigahertz dual core. Uh, not very powerful, but it's also very low power and it'll do the job because the GPU is going to be doing most of the work. I've got a Corsair CX500M, uh, modular power supply. Even though modular power supplies are generally physically larger than a non-modular power supply because they need the extra space for all the connectors because a modular power supply you can unplug all the extra wires you don't need. But in a ITX case I really want to be able to get rid of the wires. I'd rather have a larger power supply and no wires than a smaller power supply and wires I won't use because there's going to be plenty of wires I won't use because it's just a tiny system. Um, I don't have all the parts that I want right now. I'm still waiting for a Corsair uh, H60 cooler. I was going to get a Noctua Slimline um, fan one but they were sold out and I went with the H60 in the thought that one day I will probably upgrade this to a much more powerful system. Uh, I've got some Kingston 4 gig uh, RAM in, in the system right now, it's just the blue series. Uh, that's actually from my Hackintosh, I normally have like 20 gigs in it, I don't know why I have a weird number. Um, I just ended up with a 4 gig stick. Um, 
So I currently have that. I ordered two more four gig Corsairs, or sorry, uh, Kingstons. So when they show up, they're a bit late. Uh, when they show up, I'm going to pop those in and uh, put the four back into my Hackintosh. Or, depending on what operating system I go with on the TV system, I may put the two fours in my Hackintosh and keep only four in the TV system because I won't need it. Uh, another nice thing about this particular motherboard is that it has uh, a 16 times uh, 16 lane PCI Express slot. I thought I should mention that. And I'll just do a quick little... That's all the ports. You got sound, you got HDMI, Ethernet, USB 3.0. One interesting thing about the B75 chipset is that it's a relatively modern chipset in that it has onboard USB 3.0. It does uh, PCI Express 3.0, that sort of thing. Uh, but because it's like a business oriented chipset, uh, it does not allow overclocking. It only allows you to modify the base clock or the turbo clock. I can't remember. It is very limited overclocking. But since I have a crappy processor anyway, I have no real interest in upgrading. I got this used on eBay for cheap. Uh, the processor came with a fan. And there you go, even though I'm going to replace it. Uh, I've got a not couple Noctua fans in the background that I'm going to... Put into the case uh, right now I don't think the 80 millimeter is gonna work out because this case has a 120 millimeter at the front but uh, no other fans except for 80 millimeter tucked away at the back and where I'm going to put this system which is on top of my existing NAS uh, the fan will be against the uh, dresser so it won't actually exhaust anything if I can put it onto this side that would be fine but that's where the video card goes so I don't know if it'll work out I'll have to open it up I haven't opened up the case yet um, so yeah I'm hoping to get a pretty decent system out of this oh another thing I ordered uh, or one on eBay I should say is a 120 meg uh, gigabyte SSD that's all I need it's a crappy Kingston brand no I do not like have some weird obsession with Kingston. I just ended up with a lot of their stuff. Uh, their SSD, the, the particular SSD, I think it's the V300, is just a Sandforce controlled solid state drive, nothing too special, six gigabit per second. Um, so yeah, uh, right now I have a mechanical hard drive here just to screw around with them. I'm probably not gonna make any kind of video on any of the software side of it. I find those videos to be kind of boring usually and hell this video is boring enough and there's enough people on the internet making home theater PC builds I am doing this for no real reason I just kind of wanted to document building my system uh, this video is going to be stretched out over a few days because like I said I'm still waiting for some parts Amazon should deliver me the cooler in a day or two uh, my RAM should show up who knows when the guy was really slow delivering or mailing it but he gave me five dollars back, which is nice of him. And uh, yeah, there's just odds and ends that uh, I'm gonna have to acquire. Uh, for example, I'd like to get a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Uh, other than that, um, one of the other main reasons for building a PC over just getting a, a Blu-ray player uh, with Amazon and Netflix on it is that uh, I would like I have a huge ROM collection. Uh, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, everything, even the more eclectic systems like Sega CD and that kind of crap. So, uh, being able to play with a proper original controller with a USB adapter, not a USB controller, which are terrible, um, you know, being able to play that on a proper TV will be pretty nice. So, uh, that's one of the main advantages. And I can also do things like play Warcraft and crap on it, just albeit at fairly low settings, although I did try it out and it did seem to run, wow, half decently. Uh, I don't know about Diablo and stuff, so we'll try that out at some point. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to open up the case and the power supply and we'll start taking a look at this stuff. All right, with the case off, you can see that it comes with a little accessory pack with all the screws and a little, oh, it comes with a PC speaker too. Um, you got all your cables for your USB 3. Fan connections, it comes with a cheap, cheap ass fan, uh, 120 millimeter at the front, and a, an 80 millimeter on the side. Like I said, I don't think I can use this one. And no, this is actually only like a 10 millimeter thick one, whereas my Noctua fan is 25 millimeters thick, so I probably can't mount it anyway. 
Um, and no, I can't move it to this side because this is where the GPU goes. Uh, this case, unlike many other little ones, has relatively little. Uh, has a uh, five and a quarter inch bay, so I can use a proper Blu-ray drive instead of a little slimline one or even a slot load one. Uh, not that I have anything really against them. The problem is cases that have those kinds of bays usually cannot take a dual slot GPU or they're low profile or they use an SFX power supply which generally costs a lot more than an HF, uh, ATX power supply. So I figured this is a really cheap case. Uh, there was a I think either $15 or $25 rebate on it which makes it like 30 bucks and it's actually built quite sturdily and it doesn't look horrible I'm not a huge fan of Cooler Master probably because of the logo I really really wish I could have gone with a Noctua I, or sorry Noctua uh, Fractal Design I love Fractal Design um, I replaced my Corsair 650D case with a uh, a Fractal Design R4, the Define series, and I love it. I bought one for my NAS, and I loved it for my NAS so much that I went, screw this, I'm buying another one for my my main system because it is just an awesome case. It's, it's so much better than the Corsair case that I don't know how the hell Corsair even makes cases, to be honest. It's like 50% cheaper. It's built better in every single way. It's just, I, I don't know. I really don't get it. I don't know why I bought the Corsair, but hey, you live and you learn. And there's a fan controller and all sorts of crap in this thing that I won't use. Uh, we'll have the motherboard control it. Uh, one nice feature about this case is that the power supply clips into a, uh, attaches to a bracket, which means it actually protrudes out the back so that you can fit more stuff in a more compact, you know, you're, you're taking power supply out of the case and putting it outside to give you more room inside the case. Uh, this case will hold three, three and a quarter inch drives, uh, three and a half inch, sorry, uh, if you use up the optical bay. Or I think it holds four two and a half inch drives. One, two, three, four, uh, I think it might be five or six. Uh, but yeah, I'm limited because I'm going to be using the optical bay and I only need one solid state drive anyway. There won't really be anything locally stored aside from some games. All the ROMs will reside on other drives like my NAS. So yeah, it's actually a pretty decent case. This, this, this one, I've never, I had a Cooler Master case for like an hour. <laughs> I, bought, I bought one originally for my Hackintosh and then took a look at it. It was broken in a couple places like the plastic was snapped and this was like you know a 150 dollar case this was not like a cheap ass little case and yeah there were like broke snapped parts on it and i just when i saw it in person i really did not like the aesthetics of it and uh i went with the corsair 650d which like i said i regret but hey what are you gonna do it's still better than the cooler master that i got i don't like their logo i think their logo is horrible why is it so damn gigantic and in the middle of my case. So I'm going to now open up the power supply uh, box at least. I haven't even opened it up yet and see what we're dealing with in there. And uh, yeah. Like I said before, this is the CX500M. That means it's modular. Uh, I'm not going to do like a proper unboxing, but you know, you got your manuals and crap and all the attached cables. Uh, let me get this out of the way. Let's see if we can rip open this bag just to get an idea of what this thing looks like uh, this also has a mail-in rebate on it uh, you know one of the concerns of this build was price because I don't want to spend too much money on it um, you know something that's essentially designed to save money by spending money so you know what I mean like it's what's the point of trying to save money on your electricity bill if you're just building something that costs way more than you'll ever get back it's like spending a hundred thousand dollars on solar panels and then getting 50 bucks back for them you know it just makes no sense so uh, there are a few pre-attached cables on this one despite the fact that it's modular um, I use a larger uh, 650 watt modular supply in my main Hackintosh uh, you got your normal ATX power connector and kind of twist it around in here are this is the um, 
commonly known as the CPU power connector, also known as the ATX 12 volt power connector, also known previously as the P4 power connector, because the Pentium 4 is what introduced it to us because it needed so much electricity, the motherboard supply could no longer fuel that processor. It needed an, its own separate 12 volt rail that would go right into it and it would then use a voltage regulator to bring it down to the you know one or two volts that the P4s use. Um, actually I think they're a bit higher, they're like 2.5. Uh, this one splits in half so that you can use uh, just the 4, which I'm going to because my motherboard does not use the 8 pin. Uh, that's the thing a lot of people make the mistake of. They think, oh no, what do I do? It's only 8 pin. Now you just split it in half on these. So uh, yeah, the they sleeve this thing, but they make it so like you still see all the yellow and stuff in it. It's not a very well thought out thing, but yeah, power supply is just kind of a generic 500 watt modular power cord, gold North American, nothing special, and you yeah, they give us some twist ties and screws. And here we've got a two port, uh, two connector serial ATA power, a three connector serial ATA power, a dual um, PCI card power connector, you know, for your graphics card. I'm only going to use one uh, line of this because I only have a 650 GTX in it, and uh, one day I may use more. And you got your one with four Molex connectors, which I probably won't use. So. Not bad. Good selection. I've also got more um, connectors in the closet from the other two modular Corsair supplies I have, so I may mix and match. I think they're somewhat interchangeable, so we'll see. I may need to power something else, but that's unlikely. Okay, here's a little up close of the motherboard. Uh, there's all the onboard video ports that won't be used because I'm going to be using a GPU. Uh, PS2 uh, port for a keyboard, which I won't use, USB 2, more USB 2, oh, there, I, I didn't even realize there was this uh, e-serial ATA port, but hey, you need to hook up a drive, actual native USB 3, um, a crappy Realtek uh, network card, there is a driver for Hackintosh systems, uh, it sort of works, Realtek 8 92 audio, I believe. Yeah, I think it's 892. Um, again, doesn't work out of the box on a Hackintosh system, but you can get the driver for it and it will sort of work. Uh, coming around, we got the big crappy Intel cooler that I just whacked on there. 16x PCI slot. Uh, two memory uh, card slots. It supports DDR3 1600, although my processor does not. Uh, USB 3.0 header, the chipset, one 6 gigabit port and three 3 gigabit ports, uh, standard ATX power connector, and that's about it. You got your um, 12 volt power supply, your CMOS battery, all that stuff. Nothing nothing else on it. So just a cheap uh, business designed motherboard. After some investigating, I took out the fan bracket for the 80 millimeter fan, which comes with the case. Uh, this is the cheap ass Cooler Master branded fan that comes with it. Uh, I have a Noctua 80 millimeter. This is the um, NFR8 1800. Uh, this guy does obviously fit in it. It's an 80 millimeter fan, but it will not fit in the case. Just a heads up if you try and do it. I did not go and buy this, uh, I just happened to have it in the closet and I wanted to see if it would work. Um, I know there are certain thickness issues with this, but I wanted to see if maybe there was room in the case. And there isn't, for future reference for anyone buying this case. That initial build was to just see how everything fits in the case and so I could use it um, and fiddle around with the system before I got my uh, liquid cooler which was going to take a couple extra days uh, from Amazon, the uh, Corsair H60. Um, so that finally arrived so I disassembled the entire computer, almost, and put it all back together and this time with the cooler uh, instead of the stupid Intel one. 
So uh, yeah, it uh, it went together fairly easy. Um, the motherboard does have a couple oddities with it. Uh, for one, they have a row of capacitors right up next to the CPU socket so that the orientation of the liquid cooler pump has to be uh, in one of two directions. You can't put it the other two or else it rests upon the actual capacitors instead of the chip and you'll quickly realize that hey my CPU is like 97 degrees Celsius that's not right and uh, once I figured that out uh, it wasn't a very difficult build uh, it all went together fairly uh, smoothly um, you know I had to try a few different permutations of where I was going to run the liquid cooling uh, lines and that kind of stuff but other than that uh, fairly easy uh, my complaint always with little cases like this is simply that there's so much wire. Uh, I can never figure out a way to get rid of all that wire, even if I use the shortest cables possible. But, like, power supplies always come with fairly long cables, and, you know, it's just, ah, it never works. I can never really get it to the point where I don't have a giant clump of wiring twist-tied in the corner. Which is essentially what I have this time, except now I have pipes running everywhere, too. Here's the front of the case. Uh, this is the 120 millimeter uh, Noctua fan. Uh, I just happen to have one in the closet. Uh, this is not a PD PWM controlled fan, but I have one of the low voltage or low noise adapters, which is just a resistor, uh, on it just to keep the noise down a little bit. Uh, this system as a whole is very, very quiet. I believe the loudest part is the DVD or Blu-ray drive. Uh, only when it's accessing data. If it's accessing a video, it slows the drive down and it's not too loud. Uh, this system, or this case I should say, is really designed for liquid cooling. Um, I'll show you why. Um, the placement of the power supply above the motherboard uh, means you can't use a tall uh, heatsink. So what you're limited to is putting a big uh, radiator block, a uh, 120 millimeter, on the front, and it's designed that the mounting screws for the block go through uh, the fan to the, the block, and it's held in place that way. Um, as you can see, here are the, here are the pipes. And we've got my uh, GTX 650 with its ridiculous power cord. Uh, the only real change I did uh, or made to the system was that uh, I swapped SSDs because it took the guy a little while to mail out my SSD. So I grabbed um, a 120 gig uh, OWC uh, SanDisk based, uh, sorry, SanForce based uh, SSD. Uh, they're good. It's essentially the same thing as the Kingston one that I ordered, uh, which showed up today. Uh, but I'm going to put that in my USB uh, boot drive. This is a USB hard drive that has a little display on it. And you can load the drive up with ISO files, and it will pretend to be a CD-ROM drive. And you can boot the uh, host computer off of whatever you want. So instead of having to burn a Windows CD and a you know Mac OS CD and a FreeNAS CD and all that stuff and having a big stack of optical disks, you just pop that thing in, select the disk, and it becomes whatever disk you want it to be. Uh, on the other side of this thing, there is a giant cluster of wiring because this is the best I could do. I got the huge freaking 50 feet of uh, CPU power connector, you know, the serial ATA power connectors, CPU power connectors, USB cables that run around the case. Um, I don't even have the audio connectors hooked up at the front. So yeah, I've got them twisted up in the top. Unfortunately, one, well, like one little thing I would say that I would really like on this case is the ability to disconnect these things. Uh, I'm not sure if the other ones can, but I know the audio cable doesn't disconnect. It's actually soldered in. So it'd be nice if it was a little bit more modular. For example, on my Fractal Design R4s, uh, if you don't like the fan controller, you, the actual whole cable assembly for it just disconnects from the board. So you don't have to deal with all that clutter. So that would have been a nice touch. That's really the only uh, 
minor issue I've had with this case. It's actually worked out very well for such a cheap case. Um, like I said earlier, it was like it's like fifty bucks with like a fifteen or twenty dollar rebate. So yeah, I mean, hey, you could build a main system in this. It's got enough space for like three and a half inch mechanical drives with an optical drive and an SSD all at the same time, or you can have like five SSDs in it. So yeah, I mean, I think the the build turned out well. Um, I'm still fiddling with software. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it. Um, here's the thing: I would prefer to run Mac OS because uh, my main system is here in the bedroom and if I work night shift, I, I work various shifts. If I happen to be working night shift, it's very annoying because I can't use the computer because my wife's asleep in here. So what I would like to do is have a system in the other room that I can run all my stuff on. Now if it runs Mac OS, that means I get access to their cloud system, iCloud, which means I can use all my documents and share stuff around like it just makes it so much easier um, it also means I can run Aperture which is my video editing software and or photo editing software and iMovie which I do my really amazing video editing on um, so it'd be nice to be able to run all that stuff on the system out there when I'm not able to use this one or the main one so I want to stick with Mac OS but right now I'm having a couple problems. One, I had uh, I had a very common issue, which is um, the video card's not outputting audio through the HDMI, but I fixed that. There's a uh, kernel extension called HDMI audio, interestingly enough, and it just simply enables it, and it worked really well. So that works, and I was able to play Hearthstone and stuff like that on the system without issue. Uh, the main problem I'm having right now is that sleep is not working. When you tell the system to go to sleep, it goes to sleep, but it still draws the same amount of power. It's not actually going into deep sleep. It's simply um, shutting off the monitor. So although this system only pulls 40 watts idle, which isn't bad, uh, it <laughs> unfortunately pulls 40 watts all the time. It just refuses to shut off. So I really need to figure out what the deal is with that. Um, Unfortunately, this motherboard isn't very popular, so it's not like I can just get a lot of information on it really simply. So I might have to ask around on the forums and see what uh, see what other people have to say. It might be something really simple. So, uh, you know, there's that issue, and there's also the issue of if I'm using it to replace my PlayStation 3, which is our main Blu-ray player, the ability to just simply use my Harmony remote, turn on the system, and watch a movie is really important. And right now the remote control I have for it, I bought like a USB uh, Windows Media Center compatible remote. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to be able to uh, wake up the system or anything like that uh, from sleep. So I'm going to have to figure out what the deal is. Because I, I want to run XBMC on it uh, because it is... a uh, pretty good media player from what I've seen of it. Uh, it's just that right now it looks like remote control isn't working. So I may be forced to switch over to Windows Media Center or uh, a Linux build specifically designed for this. Um, they do make, like for example, XBMC that is straight up a Linux install with it built in. So it's made specifically for it and that's all it does. But, uh, like I said, I would really prefer to run macOS on it, especially since it runs so well. I installed it, no problems the first time. The only things that didn't work are the Ethernet and the audio. Uh, I simply installed the included drivers for both of those. Worked right away. Uh, the HDMI audio problem was a really simple fix. Other than that, everything on the system works great under macOS. Like, <laughs> it is kind of funny that because the CPU is a Celeron, um, Apple never released a system with a Celeron in it, uh, or a Pentium for that matter. So the system itself initially was saying it's an i3. Uh, it would start up and it would just say, oh, it's a 2.6 gigahertz uh, i3. And then it started after a couple restarts. Now it says it's an i5. So, I mean, yeah, it's probably just a display issue. It's not really an issue 
you know, it's not going to try and use system extensions or CPU extensions that don't exist. At least it hasn't. Like, I've, I haven't had any crashes at all on it. And I've been trying it out with weird software, like, um, you know, video software and doing also ripping Blu-rays, all sorts of stuff, just to put it through its paces. Um, and, yeah, I haven't had any problems with it, but, um, you know, I, so I, so it leads me to believe that it is just a display issue that's just saying it's an i3 or an i5 uh, and that it won't actually cause any weird behavior but uh yeah it's been a really really nice build and you know got the nice little got the nice cover back on just snaps on I do like the fact that there's USB ports on the front I know that's not like unique to this case but um, I can plug in all our USB controllers to it uh, the case itself fits perfectly on top of my Fractal Design R4 in there. I don't know if I'll keep it there, but um, initially when I bought it, this this was the idea. Uh, unfortunately, it's too high to fit on my our TV stand, uh, which I knew going in. I knew that it could fit physically, but the, the optical drive is too high. If these were swapped, I could use it, but um, yeah, I couldn't really find a case that would work that met my needs. Uh, the lights on the front are actually um, moderately bright. The hard drive LED isn't too bad, but the power light's a bit bright. I mean, yeah, you can just disconnect them, or I can put a resistor in there and lower the lower the brightness a bit. But, yeah, I, I really cannot say a major problem at all with this uh, Cooler Master case, or really any of the other parts I, I had for this system. Um, when I was researching this, this motherboard, the uh, Asus board uh, B75M-ITX, uh, I saw a video on YouTube of a guy saying how terrible it was to run a ha on a Hackintosh, saying that the USB ports acted up, they would freeze the system, they would call there were all sorts of issues with the system. I've experienced none of them. The only issue I've had with the system under macOS is the sleep issue, which I'm sure is something simple that I just haven't enabled. Uh, probably in the BIOS. It's a great board for Hackintosh so far. Uh, one really nice feature is that you can actually, from within the BIOS, go to firmware update and it will connect to the internet without an operating system, download the BIOS, and update itself which is pretty cool. My Gigabyte board doesn't do that, which is a little boring, but you know, you have to go the whole USB flash drive thing where you stick the BIOS file on there and then you get issues where it goes, oh no, there's no file on it, even though you put it there because it wants like FAT32 or FAT16, whatever. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a really great system so far. Uh, I just have to get the software um, sorted out like I said earlier, I'm not going to really cover that because it's pretty boring. It's really just me fiddling with settings and stuff. Um, I may post, uh, I'll put, put in the description if I do figure out like something, a quick fix for whatever the problems I'm having. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty much going to leave it there.